Good morning, everyone. So we will start with the uh, workshop on public administration. And a uh, few things I will clear at the outset. <clears throat> First thing is that you should have as many questions as possible from your side. OK. Right in the beginning itself, you need to have some questions. I will presume that you have many questions because uh, I don't think that all of you have decided your optional yet. How many of you have decided your optional? Like how many of you have decided about public administration? Okay, few of you have decided. Rest of you are not sure where you are going, what you are doing. About So I will discuss briefly also about how you should select your optional, what factors you can take into account as you select your optional subject. Okay, then I will get into the details about the public administration as a subject. Like what all is there in the subject? Uh, what is the content, what is the scope, what syllabus is all about and practically also we should understand. Then we will also try to understand after that that how the learning of this subject is going to help you. Help where what? Help where? Hmm? In administration, so directly you will just like forget about the exam, I mean no need to clear the exam directly go on to serve. So, the society through administration before that you have to clear the exam right so it has to help you in clearing the exam right this optional how it helps you in other areas of general studies how it helps you in essay writing how it helps you in your interview preparation okay and more than that in the overall scheme how it helps because even when you are studying current affairs i will tell you how this subject is going to help you okay there are a lot of advantage of taking this particular optional and then of course that you will be entering into the system so we'll discuss a little bit about that also because that will bring in a lot of motivation for you inspiration also various leadership which is there at the grassroots level or at the helm of affairs at the top the prime minister and the chief ministers and many other bureaucrats at different levels in the administration right that should inspire you and then we will talk about finally the course what we have how the course is structured how it is going to be organized what approach we need to follow i will also tell you something about like from your end what should be your approach of studying an optional right and specially specifically public administration so first of all <clears throat> we will start with if you people have any question right in the beginning itself so I will not be answering it straight away, but I will be incorporating that in the discussion, right? Because I need to listen from your side. And second thing I wanted to make it clear that, as I said, let us make it as interactive as possible, right? The environment has to be absolutely diffused in terms, I mean, that should support learning, right? So anyone, it should be open that anyone wants to share anything, anyone wants to uh, say anything, or if you have any question that should come right we invite that and also at the same time I am going to moderate the entire thing so I may not take up certain questions or may disallow certain questions if it is not very relevant fine so let's start if you have any question and you should start you know start speaking up okay because this this is your first platform right your classroom itself shall be your first public platform where you should start speaking in front of other people if you have not been doing so far in your life because ultimately you will have to represent yourself isn't it even in the interview board for that matter so whatever way is like whatever uh, you know uh, you are comfortable with in whatever language and expression just speak up say something have questions yes एक साल की प्रिपरेशन से क्लियर हो सकता है एग्जाम बिल्कुल हाँ बिल्कुल हो सकता है बिल्कुल हो सकता है इट्स अबाउट हाउ यू आर प्रिपेयरिंग हाउ फोकस्ड यू आर व्हाट इज योर स्ट्रेटजी डेफिनेटली इट कैन हैपन व्हाई नॉट पीपल स्टडीइंग इट फॉर लाइक फोर मंथ्स सो सम इट हैपन समटाइम्स दैट सम पीपल हैविंग क्लियर देयर प्रिलिम्स नो और दे आर दे थिंक दैट ओके नाउ दे आर क्लियरिंग प्रिलिम्स एंड दे हैवन स्टडीड देयर ऑप्शनल बिफोर so within 2 3 months they prepare something they do something very smart work and they also clear the exam so it's very much possible okay and one year is a good amount of time one year if you have the right strategy and right direction right guidance 
okay you will you can definitely prepare well for this particular optional of course it will require a lot of practice especially answer writing like i will tell you about certain skill and how you need to develop those skills okay it's not just about that you have to study the subject i mean you need to acquire a lot of skills for representing yourselves also right writing wonderful answers good answers how to improve your analytical expressions how to improve your language how to use the vocabulary of the subject all these things shall happen along with your learning okay so first question was from what he said that can we prepare the subject within one year any other question you have yeah you i uh, can you just repeat briefly online you you are just saying that i am on to prepare by myself some some books you can you you what is the question can you prepare without guidance also is that your question it's possible everything is possible i mean little guidance will be required right whether you take the guidance from your teacher right or you take guidance from some senior or someone who has cleared the exam right or someone who has expertise in the subject can guide you some kind of guidance will be required or either you study the write ups of the toppers of the previous years and take guidance from there without guidance how will you move some guidance is required right or you have a supernatural quality or knack in you that you look at the syllabus and look at the question paper i mean that is also possible some people may be very smart and intelligent and wise also to even understand by themselves like what is the syllabus what kind of questions are coming and then you study the subject you become more familiar everything is possible but the question is that it is going to take a lot of time classes it smoothens the process when you are attending the class everything becomes disciplined and structured what you will be doing in one year we will do it in 3 to 4 months over here right and you will have to dedicate lesser time every day because i will tell you every day that what you have to study right what we are covering in the class whatever we will cover in the class will be very well structured and maybe right now itself i can mention that what we say that when we are taking the classes we will i write a lot on the board okay i write a lot and we develop frameworks proper notes the way it should be prepared and in the class itself all your notes will be prepared you do not have to prepare any notes by yourself one thing you will not do is to waste your time in preparing any extra notes because this is how you have to utilize the time so in the class not only you are learning understanding everything you are also preparing the notes and that will be your final notes i will also tell you how you can update that note how you can do some more value addition in that notes afterwards but the base will be your class notes only okay that is the biggest take away from the class not only what you have learned and understood more than that the notes which you are going to prepare in the class itself are you getting the point so this process it helps any student a lot right and in subjects like so all these optionals like social science optionals many of you may not have studied any social science before how many of you have been a non student i mean a student from other backgrounds apart from social sciences okay most of you are from science commerce engineering all these different backgrounds right and this is your your first try first attempt uh, with respect to a social science subject and this will require a new type of orientation also okay not in this class but in our foundation classes i will discuss about the difference between art and science also right so i'll have a lot of questions like fundamental questions i'm going to talk about later about the approaches okay so one another question which was asked is that can we prepare by ourselves oh yes anything is possible okay but of course you have to understand your own capacity you need to obviously we are all of us are in different situations right so given the situation with respect to whatever situation we are in whether it is in terms of our resources whether it in terms of our capacity then you have to take the decision right doing the classes will obviously it will 
help you in terms of reducing your own you know labor you can focus better maybe you can clear the exam in lesser time that may happen also but then of course other factors are also responsible any other question now these were these were the questions which i thought i will answer straight away because i cannot integrate that in our later discussion but some questions i may integrate later on yes how safe it is to take this 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 i will answer this i will answer okay in terms of scoring this i will answer later on okay because many are taking this subject as optional okay yeah that's true okay fine so we will we we'll look into that also like how, whether it is right to take the that particular subject which is popular among the students right lot of students are taking on how scoring it is right how many people are appearing mains and how many people are clearing i will tell you some data also union public service commission it comes up with an annual report every year okay in that i mean you should and especially students of public administration should become familiar with that annual report and you should also see by yourself what that annual report is what is the content of the annual report that annual report it will tell you all about the profile of the candidates who are clearing the exam okay what social background they are from what their discipline graduation had been into and what optional subjects have they taken and they will give you the data also there so i will tell you some data like the 71st annual report is already out i mean that was a previous year now new report 72nd one will come okay so all the previous is also available if you want to go and you can see for yourself but i mean i would rather say that you just have a glimpse and have an idea about okay there is a report and this is the content especially public administration students need to know this but i will tell you important data right as far as the performance of subject is concerned any other question i will answer this later on in detail approach of study i will anyhow discuss later on okay about you must be having question about books courses how to start basic book biggest biggest problem like what is the basic book i can study the fundamental book which will you know make me familiar with the basic terminologies and all that that's a little problematic in public administration there's a problem that basic book is not there okay that basic book is not there and we have a particular uh, booklet okay which we provide as a foundation booklet in our class and the first 7 to 8 sessions will be only basic we will not start the syllabus first 7 sessions minimum will be only for basic fundamentals because i'll tell you the reason also i will tell you but a little later on why is that so okay but still i will recommend some basic readings don't worry i will still recommend some basic readings where you can start with okay any other question application based or good knowledge of do you need a very good knowledge of constitution and polity this is your question i will tell you everything i mean i'm going to discuss the content you will get i in fact i will explain see don't take this only as a workshop take this also as a learning session it will help you later on in your even if you are not a student of public administration it is whatever we will discuss today here it will help you somewhere or the other in your you know general studies polity class maybe essay writing also some understanding will come to you today even okay you will get the answer to that question any question from the centers if you have okay so any other question anyone else have in the beginning itself so that i can integrate that as well shall we start then okay you you should be asking lot of questions in between also okay whenever you have a doubt question you can always raise it of course if it is not very relevant i may take it some other time or may not take it as well so uh the first thing we should be trying to get into because see i also have to discuss with you like how we can compare some of these options and take your decision like many of you haven't yet decided okay and uh, the decision has to be very objective based upon certain factors and you should never get influenced by any one person even if i will say that this is good or bad i will try to put the factors in front of you i will try to put the if very objectively in front of you then you take your own decision as to which subject will be good for you never ever get influenced by any one 
any other person take your start taking your own decisions right but yes of course the factors you should keep in your mind but i will come to that a little later on first let's try to understand what public administration is all about what is there in this subject then we will slightly compare it with political science also and see that what is the difference with political science and then we will try to relate with other social science optional also i will also discuss a very brief framework i will try to place all these optionals in a continuum or in some framework so that you understand what is the difference among all these optionals among these subjects right what can be the basis okay if i have this question in front of you let's me let me see let's make it interesting and let's uh, start asking the right questions if i ask you this question what can be the basis or the factor of differentiating the subjects can you tell me differentiating the subjects no i'm talking about the nature of i'm not talking about you i'm not talking about whether you are taking the optional i'm not talking in optional terms i'm talking in terms of subject if all the subjects are placed or are is there in front of you what is the basis or which factor will you will you use to differentiate among all the subjects psychological or non psychological philosophical or okay good good Why, right concept is there everywhere no i got your point something which is more philosophical something which is less philosophical maybe you are you are you are closer to the answer but i am looking for certain words let me hear other people yes again the syllabus i mean it's not about syllabus and who will decide whether the syllabus i mean i can define the syllabus to be make it as big as possible for you or you can show you know abridge it as well content well, what is the basis in the content what is there in the content that they are different in all these subject what is the difference between mathematics and philosophy what is the difference between mathematics and philosophy hmm subjective and objective yes mathematics is all facts isn't it and philosophy is all what is the opposite of facts what is opposite of facts fact you know right what is the op opposite of objective what is the opposite of objective subjective what is the opposite of fact you don't know you don't know opposite of fact is value value based subjective right one is a fact is there other is the same fact how i look at that fact how much of importance do i give to that fact how much of value do i give to that fact this is how we say there is a value and there is fact are we getting so all the subjects can be differentiated in terms of fact and fact and value or not some will be more factual other will be less factual some will be more value based others will be less some are more balanced and this is one thing we can do like for example suppose we have if i say this is a continuum continuum i'm talking about okay let you let me make you familiar that we will be using some of these terms now continuum okay what is a continuum it's a straight line which shows some variations there is a polarity right two extreme ends are there in this continuum one extreme and the other extreme two extreme ends i have to place all the optional subjects or you say all the subjects on this continuum if i have to place all all the subject on this continuum which subjects will you place on the extreme mathematics and mathematics shall i keep on one end or not isn't it because mathematics is the purest science maybe you can put physics also right chemistry is also close to that but then biology will be a little less and psychology anthropology will be even less are we getting the point on other side what shall i put public administration why why are so fascinated right in the beginning <laughs> on the other extreme we will put philosophy no philosophy 
which is the most abstract subject full of just thoughts right philosophy is about this world and the world beyond this it's about whatever your whatever a human mind can dwell into can explore anything is possible so it's all about ideas are we getting the point what we are trying to do now later on right now i am not doing it first i will discuss the content of public administration and i will get into other disciplines also and finally i will place all important subjects which you think about as optionals for upsc on this continuum and then you see that where will you be more comfortable this is one of the factors some people are very philosophical some people are very practical right some people would like to study more philosophical things some will like let me study something which is more practical some people may be more interested towards science so they want to take some option which is closer to science that may be there right i mean this is the this is the only thing how you will understand or not this is the base that's why i ask you like one single factor how will you differentiate among the subjects and that is whether it is art or whether it is science and the discussion on art and science is also a very deep discussion we'll get into later on in the fundamental class one session i will be discussing only about art and science and theories and so many other things because everything needs to be made clear every term every word don't take it for granted i will ask you like can you write one can you define what is value can you define what is fact if i will ask you the definition no matter how much you know you will not be able to write the definition and many things you have been using so much all the time in your life that you think that you know the meaning of the term but actually you don't know the literal meaning or the dictionary meaning of that particular term but still you use those terms so the idea is that we will not take knowledge for granted okay we will try to learn and understand everything every term right even for that matter if i'll write this word concept okay so you know what is concept you have been using this term or not tell me that but if i'll tell you what is concept will you be able to tell me what is concept hmm you will have your own way of defining it but i know that it will not be correct because there is a concept of concept which we do not understand okay so we will try to look at all these basic terms like there will be one session will i am discussing this but then all these things will be taken forward in all further subsequent sessions okay so this we will do let's now start our discussion on public administration okay so uh have you people anyone have read something in public administration anyone other centers also you can respond in case if you are getting my questions fact and value play important role in answer writing of niche yes of course you know it better khushi kataria prior knowledge about that subject okay prior knowledge about that subject helps in differentiating among the subject maybe yes anyone has studied anything in public admin nothing okay that's even better if the slate is as much clean it is better yes hmm you have studied okay what have you studied woodrow wilson what his his paper article what is the name of the article of woodrow wilson what is the name of the paper woodrow wilson was a former uh, president of united states of america he is also called as the father of public administration and whenever i take his name like it always gives me goosebumps the reason being that woodrow wilson why is he called as the father of public administration because he wrote one paper called the study of administration and the way it was written the way the expressions were used the way the language was there the way you know it had value in that the way it has it had emphasis in that essay that one single essay established a new discipline called as public administration in the modern sense in the modern sense it's not that administration was not studied before kautilya's arthashastra is considered as the greatest treatise on administration and politics but in the modern sense woodrow wilson's one single paper in fact it is such a wonderful write up that 
I don't think any other any other thinker is quoted as much as Woodrow Wilson and Cortelia is quoted from their respective work. Okay, so this was 1887, the year 1887 when he had written this paper and we will try to later on understand the context of the Society of United States of America and what was happening in USA that Woodrow Wilson had to write this paper and how this paper became a point of discussion across both the Atlantic seaboard means in Europe also and in USA also it was widely discussed and then later on it led to the establishment of a new discipline. Public administration is not a very old discipline when you consider it in according to the standards of Western academics. Because in India also, the I mean even formally if you talk about then a lot of work has been done but it is not recognized. Though the Cotillian work is very well recognized in the Western universities. One political thinker which will always be mentioned in the Western, Western academic circle is Cotillia. Right? So, it is not that, I mean, some this question is also asked that is it right to call Woodrow Wilson the father of public administration? Is it right? Some people will disagree because they will say no, especially people from India will not agree. No, they will say that no, Cotillia should be considered the father of public administration because he had done a lot of that elaborated. Okay, so good that you have read it. I do not know how, how much have you understood what you have got, but we will be discussing about Woodrow Wilson also in one of the sessions afterwards. Anyhow, so public administration, when we start studying this subject, first and foremost, you should understand that public, ed look at the term itself, look at the term itself, public and administration. Okay. In the word administration, have you noticed that there is the word ministry in there or not? Minister. Minister is there or not? Administration. There is some similarity, right? Minister, minister, the original word was minister from which the term minister or ministry has come. And the term ministry means to serve the society, to serve. And from that word emerges administration, right? So, what is administration? Administration is all about what? What is it about? When you are administering something means, what are you doing? Give me more terms for it. When you are administering something, what you are doing? Serving, okay. So, so many terms. Let us write all the terms first because when you write more and more terms, you become more and more, it becomes easier for you to understand, even express, okay. So, administration is related to serving. Organizing, managing, okay. I am writing your terms also here and we will see that organizing, managing and what else? Come on, administer, yes. What? Controlling, okay, fine. Controlling, I hope like if other people from other centers, you people also can answer some questions in case if you are not sleeping. Yeah. Authority. No, I mean, we say, like, it's, is it not about doing something? Administration is about doing things, isn't it? It's not just about like sitting uh, and you know, sleeping. It's about doing, right? Like doing. It's about action. It's not about law and order. It may be about law and order. That's a dip. It does law and order, no? But what is primary thing that is happening? It is doing something. It is an action oriented thing, right? So there is action. There is execution or not implementation or not you see you have to now remember some of these terms which terms are important execution implementation serving organizing managing action orientation that's what administration is it does everything who is doing everything in our society the government which is doing or not government is the most important agency or organization which is serving and it is trying to solve all the problems of the society so, administration is basically something which is doing things, which is managing, which is executing, which is implementing. Now, this administration could be any, any administration. It could be administration of a private organization also. It could be an administration of an NGO also. It could be an administration of a media agency also, isn't it? It could be an uh, administration of some resident welfare association also. Administration is everywhere. Now, the question is that the word public, 
public administration would mean what administration which is happening administration which is happening for public welfare or for public interest and also through public resources are we getting it so two things are there in public when you talk about public it means that it is working for public interest right and second thing is that it is using public resources what is public resources what do you mean by public resources what do what do i mean by give me example like what is there inside public resource over here land water oh the first thing the first resource is they need money right government without money how will it function does it take tax you or not does it, is it generating revenue or not so generating that revenue collecting that revenue and then spending that back on you isn't it that's what public revenue is that's the means how the government is is working well, government works through public resources public resources means these resources are whose resource is it it is of the people only but co collectively controlled by the government the government is taxing everyone collecting that tax and then using that money and spending it back for what purpose it is using for public interest only for their welfare right so the word public is indicative of something collective and which is authority and that is here means what government so public administration essentially is about the administration of the government what do you study in public administration you study about the entire system that is there in india what you call as system isn't it many say no system is not good system has gone corrupt so essentially you are studying the entire system from where to where panchayats you start from the top and you go who is at the top and who is at the bottom parliament is at the top above parliament is there not something the constitution is above the parliament and above the constitution there is people right we the people but anyhow you can start with constitution so we have people we the people give to ourselves the constitution then the constitution creates the parliament right the parliament makes law which further elaborate, elaborates on the on the government's organization right and then the laws are executed by the executive in the executive there are ministers who are controlling things making policy and then bureaucrats who are implementing policies and laws right then people are sitting in the headquarter you know headquarters have you heard of headquarters some terms like see public administration will open you to all these terms like secretariat you have heard of secretariat isn't it what is it have you ever gone to secretariat or sachivale there is one here in, in in delhi we have in fact two secretariat no one is of the central government what is called as central secretariat i am not just talking about there is a metro station also in that name and then there is a delhi government secretariat which is the headquarters of the government so people are sitting in the headquarter and then controlling everything in the field so how everything is happening there are you getting the point i have just told you in very brief because i am going to draw the structure so that you get an idea and then through that i will discuss the syllabus also what all, all is there for you to learn in this subject is that clear are we getting something now what is public administration if someone will ask you about write a paragraph on administration will you be able to write four lines now on administration just because you know all those terms which ones managing organizing action execution implementation doing something serving the people derived from minister minister the term no so i i will get into all this these things in detail afterwards right now i'm just showing you a glimpse and then the word public is all about public is all about public resources and public interest okay now in public resource and public interest which is the means and which is the end you understand means and end you you understand means so which one is end and which one is means means will be public resources will become the means and interest will become the ends 
so it is serving public ends so more term public ends and public means so that administration which runs through public means and for public ends is called as public another definition in terms of means and ends this means and ends are wonderful wonderful terms okay like we said fact and value similarly means and ends are wonderful terms which will keep coming i will use almost every day i will talk in terms of means and ends for more and more clarity there was a nobel prize winner in economics herbert simon who has given fact value dichotomy one of the thinkers in your syllabus so there are there are economists who have contributed there are sociologists max weber was a sociologist who have contributed yeah theory of bureaucracy yes then there are there are this taylor and fiol these people from the world of management who have contributed there's a word from there are many other thinkers from sociology and even political science who have contributed so it's a very multidisciplinary subject and don't think that's a challenge that's an advantage that's a benefit because it is going to open up your mind altogether how will it help you i will tell you that afterwards shall we move further now if the term is clear to you you will try to get into to see like what all is there okay as far as your have you people seen your syllabus hmm? you know the biggest uh, say i would say uh, something which you should have done which you have not done you know when you are coming for this class at least you should have seen the syllabus now please uh, start looking into and questioning yourself because this is a very big thing when you are preparing for this exam you have to be very careful about that you should not commit mistakes and it you should keep doing whatever is expected of you the first thing you should have done is that you should have seen the syllabus and come to this work workshop for better advantage i will anyhow tell you but this is proactiveness isn't it do you have to be proactive to learn or better or not or will you depend totally on me in case if you are here in this class will you depend totally on me yes or no no right then will you do some work by yourself or not maybe initially it be difficult for you to decipher what is to be done but slowly and slowly you should get to know okay what i have to do by myself how i can be more proactive a lot of transformation in your attitude and personality is required if you have to prepare for this exam and if you have to prepare for the option are you open for that will you be game for that sure okay so if you have not seen the syllabus let us try to okay now one more question what do you think shall we look into paper 2 first or paper 1 first but then you don't know what is there in paper 1 paper 2 <laughs> yes what is in paper 2 kautilya is there hey, what overall is there in paper 2 don't tell me the topic what overall is there in paper 2 yeah your chat is visible divakar you can write whatever you feel like if you have some questions yes no i don't tell me the topics no otherwise you'll go on telling me all the topics tell me what is the paper 2 is all about indian administration okay paper 2 is all about indian administration so i'll just write public administration let's divide this in two parts paper 1 and paper 2 sorry this side i'll write paper 2 paper 1 and paper 2 right so <clears throat> paper 2 is all about indian administration and paper 1 is all about this is about practice right practice means how it is practiced in india how administration is practiced in india what is happening in india and what is the opposite of practice hmm theory so this paper will be all about theory very good theory what is theory what is theory hmm written material given by someone <laughs> okay good enough what is written there theory is facts ideas okay idea is closer abstract it may not be abstract also but there will be some abstraction yes 
डेफिनेशंस आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस इन गुड डिटेल आफ्टरवर्ड्स ओके बट राइट नो आई कैन जस्ट टेल यू थियोरी इज देयर टू मेक द प्रैक्टिस बेटर इट इज द बेस्ट वे ऑफ डूइंग वट एवर यू आर डूइंग ओके इट इज यू समथिंग लाइक द प्रैक्टिस लाइक फॉर एग्जाम्पल लेट से एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन इज हैपनिंग सिंस वेन Since when is administration happening? Right from the beginning, right? Right from the beginning. Maybe the state or the government was not there, but there may have been some communities which were administering their own affairs. So administration has been happening right from uh, uh, since the civilization has evolved. People have learned something. They have practiced, but there was no theory. No one actually studied it, isn't it? No one studied it that how it can be done better. people were just doing and doing and doing but slowly and slowly as they got more and more experience and people started to think about it they started to write about it they started to design some new way of doing something which is a better way of doing whatever you have been doing so this is how we are evolving the theories so theory is the you can say theory is the best way of doing the practice okay i am just defining it a very layman terms for understanding because this is the this is how you will start understanding what it actually means and then later on we will elaborate it in academic terms there will be better understanding and then we will define also what is theory is this clear so paper 1 is what paper 1 is all about paper 1 is going to how paper 1 is important for any person who is working in ias how is it important for anyone who is working in ias If suppose you are an IAS officer, how will paper one help you? Because yes, okay, manuals, okay. So tell me in simpler terms some ideas. Like if you are an administrator, don't you think that you should do it the best possible way? Isn't it? So doing it the best possible way, how will you do it? Either you are a super natural person, super intelligent that you know. or you will take guidance from somewhere or you will read some books or you will learn some of these theories and then you will apply that so paper 1 is very useful for anyone who is a manager or who is an administrator there was this person mr frederick winslow taylor have you heard of frederick winslow taylor f w taylor no you haven't heard of taylor the father of scientific management movement in the world frederick taylor was a uh, was an engineer working on the shop floor this was a time of industrial revolution i will create the context when i will discuss these thinkers in detail because context is very important when the industrial revolution started no oh, yeah it was around towards the end of the 18th century So, 1778 to be the precise year, some people consider, but one particular year cannot be called as such. The second, like we say, towards the end of the 18th century. But Taylor was way after that. It was the Industrial Revolution had already happened, and he was trying to look at. He was looking at like how the work is being done in the factories. Right? There are hardly tools and equipments, and all those things were not there. People are doing just doing randomly the work they were. Taylor is regarded in the human history. because he is one person who when he was looking at the work he didn't neglect that work he actually studied the work itself what he studied work itself and he studied the best way of doing the work what is the best way of doing the work and what is the best way that you need to have the right movements isn't it so that you put minimum effort or you need to use some machines or certain tools so that you minimize on your effort so he is looking at and work means doing something right as we said something in action something getting executed so what is the best way of doing something this is how he has given his theory of there's a theory and there are principles of scientific management and it's pretty interesting when i'll discuss that later on in one of the sessions on thinkers but you get the feel as to why why you are studying this because whatever work you are doing how you can do it better like for example in the office you are in the office should there be the best way of arranging the files or not should there be the best way of putting the records or not isn't should there be the best way of listening to the people of revamp the dressel mechanism of noting down the complaints there has to be best way what you say as best practices 
This is what theory is. It tells you the best way of doing whatever is happening. Are we clear? So, you are you getting some point? Now, if someone will ask you what is there in paper 1 and what is there in paper 2, will you briefly tell them or not? Overall, what is there? You know, they are not asking you the content. They are asking you the nature. What is the nature of paper 1? Paper 1 is theoretical. Paper 2 is practical. Paper 2 is all about the Indian system. Paper 1 is whatever has been learnt across the world. Right? Whatever has been learnt across the world and then theorized and then we can apply that in our paper 1. Sorry, paper 2. That is Indian Ed. So, first of all, I should discuss paper 1 or paper 2 here with you. You tell me. Paper 1 or paper 2? Hmm? What will help us more? If you discuss paper 1 will help us more or discuss paper 2 will help us more in, in this session. Paper 2 because you will get the idea what is there first, what is the system all about and then you see what theories are there to improve upon this system. Clear? Okay, let us start then with paper 2. Now, in paper 2 you see Indian system as I said is all about, I told you everything there you know. But essentially, there are three essential levels of government in India, isn't it? How many levels of government are there? Three levels are there. What are the three levels of government in India? Yes. Levels of how many levels of government are there? I am not asking you the organs of government. Union government. That is central government, then you have the state government and then there is a local government. Three levels of government are there, right? Isn't it? Then in the local level, you have do two types. One is in the rural area, other is in the urban area. What is that called? The rural area administration or government is called as panchayats. And in the urban area, municipalities, municipal corporations, councils, other municipal bodies, the smaller ones, nagar panchayats and all that. There are many different types. Even cantonment boards are there, isn't it? That is also an administrative area. Something is being administered, right? By the military. But it is happening. So, there are essentially three levels of government. So, central government, if I, now you see central, if I just talk about central government, central government in itself is a big organization or not? It is a big organization. Inside central government, what all is there? What all is there inside central government? We have a, hmm? okay, Lok Sabha like parliament is there. In parliament also there is something inside. Lok Sabha, Rajya Sabha, president is also part of parliament. Right? Then you have the executive. In the executive, there are two types of executive. You have some idea? There are two types of executive. Permanent executive and temporary or political executive. Right? Political executive are the ministers. Ministers are the political executive and below them are the bureaucrats who are permanent executive. So, executive has two components. Now, below the no, ministers are head of, ministers are head of what? Ministries, right? Ministers are head of ministries. So, we have a number of ministries allocated to some or the other ministers. Some ministers even have two ministries under them. Then below the ministry, what is there? <clears throat> what do you have? What do you have below the ministry? Departments. Like in finance ministry, there are five departments, right? Similarly, all the ministries, there are departments. Some ministries are big, have many departments. Some are smaller ministries. Some may not have departments also. There's just ministry. Like department of financial service in the finance ministry. Department of revenue, department of expenditure. Right? Home Ministry, Finance Ministry, these are important ministries. They will have number of departments. Then in the departments also, all these departments will have two things. There is, there is some people who will sit in the capital city itself to control everything. Right? What you call as headquarter or the secretariat. And some people are working on the ground. What is that called? What do we call as ground as by other terms? Headquarter and field, yes, that is the formal term we use. So, people are sitting in the headquarters and people are working on the field. So, there are agencies, many other agencies, like we say, executive in the department, they are executing agencies. People who are making policy and then it is executed. Like, for example, 
you have pwd public works department in irrigation department right electricity department all these departments are executing something so they are also called as executing or executive agencies they will have their field level offices their workshops and so many things are you getting the point then you see some of the organizations they also are board type of organization have you heard of board you have not heard of board b o a r d boards your edu your uh, this the like for example the state education board which is conducting the exa the exam cbsc itself that's a board right do we have a railway board also do we have a railway board yeah there is a railway central social welfare board there are many boards what is this board type of organization you have no idea there are commissions also commissions can you give me the examples of commissions hmm women commission or oh, upsc first and foremost union public service commission have you ever thought about like why it is commission what is commission why is it not board why is it not authority why is it commission so what is commission exactly what what commission does so this particular term is is important for us or not election commission national women commission national commission for human rights sc st commission backward class commission minority commissions atomic energy commission union university grants commission ugc so many important commissions are there what is commission type of body why do we require commission type okay then there are authorities also have you heard of authorities there are regulatory bodies also regulatory authorities like tri is one of them have you heard of tri telecom regulatory authority of india there are regulatory bodies delhi development authority dda many such development authorities are there you see the types of organizations which are there then you have the council type of organization have you heard of council type of organization or not a like council of minister is also council type even rajya sabha is also council of states that is also council type then there are committees also isn't it so departments ministries commissions boards authorities councils committees and many other types of organization all these things are there in the central government itself now you are not supposed to learn all the organizations no you are supposed to focus on concepts and you have to focus on certain organizations only not all of them is that clear so now ultimately you see central government is what central government is in itself an organization in which there are many other organizations can we say that central government is all about its organization of organization of organization right government system is a complex whole of organization what is fundamental then to learn is what is fundamental then to learn is working of organization have you realized in your life the importance of organization till now have you you have not i mean today maybe you are realizing but you have taken it for granted human endeavor the human being they have achieved so much in this world right how how what are the factors through which we have achieved we have achieved so much by maybe by innovation by research by resources by using technology but the most important thing has been the organized effort you can never achieve big things great things until and unless you put organized effort of many people without organization nothing could be achieved you were born in the organization you will die in an organization organization is an one ultimate reality of the society even a family can be considered as an organization right so what is important for us to understand is organization what do you call your body as what do you call it in biology what do you call your body as it's an organism isn't it this is the most sophisticated organization in the world 
your body henry fiol when he will explain organization he will draw the analogy from the human body and he tells look at the human body and how every organs are placed there and how they are interrelated how well they are coordinated and who is coordinating your body which organ is coordinating your brain is coordinating everything and every organ is this way controlled coordinated and it produces the best results then he applies this analogy to the working of a normal organization maybe a private organization itself and then he explains like let's see you see how an organization works and how it can work better and better right so will you give importance to organized efforts now will you give importance to organizations now after all wherever you will be you will be working in an organization only no as any one individual in the entire so the, your entire realm of thoughts which is there you know in paper one is all about it is related to most of it is related to making the working of organizations better how will you define organization yes i have been receiving a lot of your answers but sorry i have not been able to respond to all of them good enough yes okay w wonderful great see if you to your point if you add his point that would be a complete definition cooperation is required right some kind of coordination is required many people working together for common objective but working how through coordination if suppose four people come if i ask them to take this desk outside if i call four people and all four of them are applying force from all the directions will it go anywhere no there has to be coordinated effort it has to move in a particular direction to achieve the goal so this way you can write your own definitions by understanding there is no need to mug up no need of mugging up you just need to understand everything it should settle down in your brain and then you will be easily reproducing it are we clear so central government and so also the state government because state government's pattern is more or less similar to that of the central government there also there are ministries and departments and other organizations at state level so central government or the state government or the local government they are nothing but organizations and of organizations of organization if i will draw one diagram okay let me just draw some diagram here suppose this is what i am showing as a central government okay you people also can draw something like this Going some kind of organization there, okay? There are many org. Basically, what I am trying to show that this is an organization of organization of organ. Then uh, even at the local level, there may be some organization, okay? So these are in themselves what these are organizations. they are connected in certain ways now you are not supposed to know how they are connected that we will understand later on when we look at the detail but this is like you say central government this is state government and this is local government in the local government what do we have in the rural area in the urban area there are organizations again what are the organizations in the rural areas in the government local rural area gram panchayat is there you have heard of yeah what is called as panchayat samiti zila parishad you know all these then we also have a district level administration levels of government are also there and there is administration also like for example office of district magistrate now what district magistrate does what district magistrate does i i think that is the one post which is attracting you right in the beginning when you are preparing for this exam district magistrate or you straight away are uh, aspiring to become cabinet secretary district magistrate right why district magistrate is a oh, is is perhaps the most significant public office anywhere in the world the most important office i would say ramsay macdonald one of the british prime ministers he he says that 
district magistrate or district collector as they were called earlier in India, they are like the little tortoise, little tortoise carrying on their back the load of elephant of Indian administration. But their back is very strong, like the tortoise, the back is very strong. So, the district magistrate are those little tortoise who are carrying the load of elephant of Indian administration on their back. There is so much of responsibility, so much of function that they have to carry out. I mean, there is something called as district administration. I am not putting in this diagram that is to be, you know, drawn separately. District magistrate's office or the district administration, it is implementing the programs and schemes of which government? Central government or state government? Both. Yes, both. In fact, it also sometimes does work in relation to local government also. Right now, you are not familiar, neither in one class I can show you the entire glimpse of the entire administration. But then, you know, why I became curious to learn more and more about this subject is because I wanted to know everything about the Indian system. Whether you are working as an administrator, whether you are working as a social activist, whether you are working as a politician, whether you are working as a normal activist or even as a citizen, you need to know the system that is there in your country. Knowledge of public administration helps you in whatever endeavor you will have, you be taking up and especially in terms of any kind of leadership where you are contributing to society. Like some of you might, might be willing to become politician also later on. I am not sure that after some time you will quit civil services. Many people have this ambition, then they will join politics. But as a politician, the real politician, someone who is a real leader need to know the entire system, how it works. This is here your paper 2 is telling you everything about the about the system. And when I learnt and I explored more and more and done a lot of research, gone into the fields also in fact for that matter, trying to understand the system and your mind just gets totally opened up. This will happen when we will be going through all these sessions in paper 2. Are we getting the point? So, district administration is there which is, which is connected to all three levels of government is implementing their, their policies, their programs. I will get into all these terms like laws, policies, projects, programs, you know, everything will be clear slowly and slowly. All of these things like the three levels of government, I would say that they are kept in what? It is kept under something. Can I call this as, let me call this as the overall let me call this as administration. Okay, So, the entire administration includes, it is a complex whole of organization, administration, complex whole of organization. This is government's overall administration. But I will tell you the difference between government and administration also afterwards, not today. Okay, What is the difference between government, administration, management? I will tell you everything in the fundamental basic class itself. Now, what is outside administration? What is outside government or outside administration? What influences the government or administration? Any answer? People's interest, okay. People's protest, People's interest, people protesting. If people are protesting, what is it? Is it social or is it political or is it economic? Protest is what? Is it politics or is it so something related to social or economic expression? You know what is politics? Politics? No. What is politics? Politics, come on. You people are champion in that, right? In your groups, you do that. Try it out. What is politics? What is your understanding? You should have your own understanding of everything, no matter how uh, primitive it can be. But at least you need to have 
it may be very rudimentary still you need to have yes ideological difference okay telling lie politics is good or bad politics first of all is good or bad no you are you are acting like an artist now you are being diplomatic i am asking whether it is good or bad you are saying it's an art is it good or bad essentially primarily the purpose is good right it is conducted for the good of the society it becomes bad in practice some type of practice may deteriorate may become you know something negative politics essentially is good politics is about it's about so many things politics is about pursuing interests right politics is about pursuing interest then only you protest right then only you represent then only you are trying to get power it's a pursuit for power also in order to achieve the interest of particular section or society or group of people together right they will what they what is bjp doing what is bjp doing no don't now tell me everything what they are doing just tell me precisely in terms of politics what they are doing is that they are collecting so many people's interest or not and they try to bring those things into the agenda which can get the maximum amount of votes means larger and larger interest they will aggregate interest and they will try to pursue on those interest and then on that basis they are trying to capture power but politics is about many things politics essentially is about problem solving okay what is politics all about it is about problem solving and for problem solving you are pursuing interest and that may require acquisition of power also so what politics is about it is about problem solving so essentially this administration is placed under what if i draw one more outside this okay a block or maybe a circle because i was not having enough space that i could have drawn circle properly so i'm just using a block otherwise i would have drawn circle this is what we call as the polit you can call it as political environment or you can say it is a political political system okay administration can be called as what system administrative system administrative system is kept under the political system isn't it first of all you will make policy or not and then you will implement it how will you make policy what problems are to be solved and outside the political system what system will be there which system will be there outside the political system yes what system will be there outside the civilian yes say it social system yes outside the political will be social so you draw these three set okay this should be very clear because this is something very basic fundamental but then later on we are going to discuss a lot about this a lot and why i am drawing this also will i will i have to explain you the syllabus of paper 1 which will help us to understand first of all you should be very clear about that the administrative system is kept under the larger political system and political system is kept under the social system society is there everything is there as part of society it has its own problems some problems requires redressal which we identify through politics and we try to solve those problem by making policy that is what politics is making politics is about Let, let's write let's write we will be more clear if i say politics okay like i said administration we should be clear about what politics is the moment you think about politics you should think about politics is about problem solving you see the expressions we should use in our notes which are quite self explanatory okay and you can by yourself elaborate sometimes i will make you write elaborately also many points sometimes usually i don't dictate in the class okay 99% of the time i don't dictate i will write here itself now this is very random so in our regular class things are more organized and we'll write more but if something very analytical comes right or maybe something interesting two three lines you have to write i may dictate that 
but you will be noting down everything what I am writing down on the board and if I am explaining also, right? If you want to write something extra by yourself, you can always do that. But minimum, whatever is required, I, I will anyhow write it on the board and you will be able to make notes out of that. And most of the notes that will be created will be in point form only, will be in some structured format. Either there will be flowchart or there will be some kind of pointer there. So that we are very clear what we have to remember and what needs to be elaborated. Okay, so if I think about politics, politics is about problem solving. Problem solving, before you will solve the problem, first thing you have to do is that identification of problems. Identification of problems, first you will identify the problem. A problem is a problem when it is considered collectively as a problem. Like for example, in Indian society, untouchability was not a political problem for a long time, isn't it? In all these years, untouchability was not even considered as a problem. But then a time came when we identified it as a problem. That means it was a political process. That we identified untouchability as a problem, we started working for it, there were movements, so much of effort was put by such great leaders including Gandhi. And then we have, we included that in our constitution, right? Constitution itself under Article 17 abolishes untouchability. Though constitution does not abolish caste system, but it abolishes untouchability. What about caste system? But constitution does not talk about explicitly about caste system, but it tries to ignore the caste system. It tries to do everything which will dilute the caste system, but it does not abolish right away. Legally, it does not abolish caste system, but it does abolish untouchable. It is very clearly written in article 17, isn't it, that uh, untouchability is abolished. Constitution itself is saying it is abolished. No law is required. In fact, there is a very, you know, important significant relationship between constitution, law, different types of law, which again I am going to discuss in the basic fundamental class itself. You will get an idea about, okay, what is statutory law, what is administrative law and what are constitutional laws. Okay, but that is, there is a separate session for that. So, identification of problems, then problem solving. For problem solving, what you have to do? There has to be aggregation of, first of all, you write pursuit of interests. Pursuit means you carry forward the interest. Whose interest? Of any group, any group. And you see there are political parties also which are fighting for different types of interest. Some political party like left parties. Left parties will focus more on whose interest? The interest of the labor working class people. BJP as a party is focusing upon whose interest more? Business class, capitalist class, trader class. Congress as a party is focusing upon whose interest? On everyone's interest. So basically, it's an, it used to be seen as an umbrella organization. I mean, that's a different story altogether. Okay, so pursuit of interest and then in pursuing interest, they will also do what? Aggregation of interest. Why are they aggregating interest? You have to aggregate interest because without aggregating interest, you will not become powerful. If you have to get more votes, you have to take care of many interests, isn't it? Then they will come up with some agenda where larger and larger interest gets represented. So, the aggregation of interest, then politics is about what? Politics is about pursuit for, for power, acquiring power. Once they have acquired power, what they will do? Politics is about vision. They will set the vision and then politics is about making policy. Are we clear? You see, in steps, you can remember it now in sequence what is happening in this process. Identification of problem, problem solving, then pursuing interest, aggregation of interest, coming to power, that is pursuit for power, setting the vision and making policy. For what purpose? For solving the problem. Will you be able to write a paragraph now on politics, what politics is all about? Is this clear? Is this different from administration or not? What is the difference between politics and administration? Which is more fact based, which is more value based? Have you got the question all of you? What is more fact based, what is more value based? 
पॉलिटिक्स इज मोर वैल्यू बेस्ड और एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन इज मोर वैल्यू बेस्ड ऑल ऑफ यू आर क्लियर राइट पॉलिटिक्स इज मोर वैल्यू बिकॉज यू आर विजन सी विजन थिंकिंग थॉट लॉन्गर टर्म एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन इज डू नाउ इमीडिएट This is about more about what is there, what you will do more packed way. So politics and okay. Now, if there is mixing up of politics and administration, is it good or bad? We were having the second wave of Corona, right? Last year. At the same time, there were elections in West Bengal. You know, and what the leaders were doing? I mean, all kinds of Uh, rules were made for the people but they themselves were doing election rallies prime minister himself and many important ministers those who are administrators they got more and more involved into politics is it a good idea that the prime minister should participate as much in the election campaign is it a good idea i mean it may be a good idea for their party their party may have certain expectation from the prime minister prime minister also feels that he has some responsibility towards the parties that may be there but for administration it is not good because if you will in bring too much of politics into it then what will happen it will disturb like example i'm just giving you suppose you are writing an answer okay if you are writing an answer i give you a assignment i okay write answer then i just come and you know stand next to you and i keep peeping into your answer sheet and you are writing will you be able to write and and the words will be if i keep telling you also please correct this and correct that while you are writing it will be even worse isn't it so too much of political yaar ye echo ho raha hai bye disturbance aa raha hai so too much of interference is not good okay politics and administration they are together but they require to be separated this was the question what woodrow wilson was trying to ask ye kya ho raha hai is problem ho raha hai echo ho raha hai isme to problem hai bye just a second you can ask some question in case if you have till now the three system you have got administrative system political system and social system okay so i am i'll just continue okay we will keep fixing it so no okay i have to stop they don't solve the problem yeah that's there i mean that that we know it hit me over hmm okay the value is not generated in politics you are saying yeah 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 that is there people who have a power corrupts power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely this is being said right so obviously there will be misuse of power when will there be misuse of power when will there be misuse of power when there is no control you see this is why i am asking you this question 
if suppose here you have administration and here you have politics okay if too much of politics is involved in administration it is not good because it will disturb administration every now and then if the minister is calling the secretary and you know asking him to come and explain everything he will just get too disturbed if you file too much of rti in a government office don't you think it will disturb the administration isn't it so too much of political interference is not good but if politics is all together not there if the minister is not questioning the bureaucrat then the bureaucrat will be at their own discretion that is also not good some control of politics is required over it if we will not question the government if we are not holding the government accountable this is the key word right accountability has to be there if there is proper accountability then things will not go wrong things will not go corrupt right and accountability means some politically you are controlling the admin even people have some power to control the administration have you got the point there is a very strong linkage between politics and administration woodrow wilson when he was there when he was writing his paper in 1887 this is what he he, he saw in united states of america he what, what was there in usa actually you know you know about indian civil services right when it, when was it created indian civil services or rather i should ask you uh, when was the open competitive examination started for civil services in india which year was that any idea you have heard about lord macaulay who was he lord macaulay actually has a lot of contribution in uh, you know drafting a lot of codes for india in education legal no no yeah, that was that he was yes that's a separate contribution i am not interested in that right now lord macaulay's committee was established to study civil services reforms in india which gave its report in the year 1853 okay 1854 onwards open competitive examination was started in india we will discuss this as entire history of civil services in one of the earlier sessions itself okay how the the from the british times right the british east india company how they established the administration and how it has evolved all together that's a wonderful story actually civil services is also part of it so 1854 onwards the civil services they became competitive but india was the first country in the world to have introduced open competitive examination right the british did for india first and then later on they introduced in their own country also and in in case of usa it happened even later on because in usa there was no open competition earlier there used to be what is called as spoils system and what was there in spoils system under the spoils system the person who wins the presidency okay the person who becomes the president of usa he himself was appointing his own civil servant so from where will he appoint from his own party so this way the entire administration it used to become political have you got the point it means even the permanent executive mostly it was political people only so there's too much of politics in administration that's why woodrow wilson had come up with this concept of politics administration dichotomy he says that politics need to be separated from administration but then he says it needs to be separated yes but some kind of democratic control of politics over administration should also be there are you getting it this is how the you know this is how he says politics and administration are separate so administration needs to be treated separately and this is how he created a new discipline of public administration mentioning that it is different from political science fine so we have the system the three systems that you have seen the political administrative and this one is social system now in our in our paper 2 what you are going to learn about there is a unit called as union government and its administration so you will get to know everything about the union government all its organization how it works about prime minister and president and then you have to have wonderful questions right about prime minister itself you need to know about prime ministers as administrators you know you have to see their style of leadership how they have managing the affairs and similarly for chief ministers even president and governor 
many of these things you are already studying in your Indian polity. I will tell you about how this paper is going to overlap with your GS afterwards, but a lot many things which you are entire paper to a public administration is going to help in your polity and whatever you are studying in your polity is going to help you in your paper too. In fact, it will help you a lot even in the preliminary examination, not only in polity questions, but nowadays there are questions related to law also, one or two law question comes and then they will ask you one or two questions on governance also. So, you will be better equipped to answer all those questions even in your preliminary exam. Forget about mains, I will tell you after. Is that clear? Then everything about the state government, then about the relationship between the center and the state. What? There has to be a lot of coordination, right? Like for example, what are, can you tell me few, some, any utility or anything that is to be coordinated between center and state? where coordination is very important, which area are, are they where the coordination between center and state is very, very important, hmm? budget, okay, budget because the gov central government gives some funds to the state governments, okay, that is a financial part, but that is very technical anyhow, we will be discussing that in detail along with GST, other taxes, revenue, how it is, this is a lot of economics also involved here, yes, yes, security, yes, very good. On security issue, they have to cooperate and coordinate or not, you know, armed central armed forces, then arts spy issues there, armed forces act, what else, which issue, territorial, okay, territorial issues, there may be some conflict among the states also, more than that, they, there is a, the issue of water, right, water distribution, river water disputes are there, then electricity. Electricity is generated somewhere, transmitted and distributed somewhere else. The entire network, that grid is operating. We have Central Electricity Regulatory Commission, Central Electricity Authority. Now, all these organizations you do not have to study in detail, but as an issue in center state relationship, uh, in brief you will have to study these. What are the issues on which center and state coordinate? What are the issues on which they will cooperate? So, this relationship between center, that means one thing which we have to also study here is the relationship aspect, the relationship between center and state, relationship of between state and local and also the relationship between central and local. Like for example, what is the relationship of the state government with the panchayats? What is the relationship of the state government with the urban local bodies? These relationships. So, inter-organizational affairs are there. Intergovernmental affairs are two governments how they are related to each other, then only the system will get clear to you. So, central government, state government, then rural development and panchayati raj and urban local government, these four units directly on the levels of government. Then in the central government, essentially you must have heard there are public sector enterprises. Have you heard of public sector enterprises? What are public sector enterprises? These are government owned organizations which are running some business, doing some commerce or producing something, right. All these, what, what are called as, now there are three types of public sector enterprises. What are they? No, Maharatna is for the purpose of reform, that is a separate classification. In organizational term, public sector enterprises, they can be public corporation, like for example, LIC. Now LIC is being privatized, but earlier it was a public corporation or food corporation of India. So, there see there is a corporation type of organization also. So, these are public corporation. Then there are government companies. Like for example, hey, give me any example of government company. ONGC, oil and natural gas. No, it is corporation, but, but, but it is a company only. Okay. Its name, in its name, it is corporation, but it is a government company. This I will tell you like we have three, three sessions only on public sector enterprises. This is one unit in your syllabus because you need to know about everything about public corporation also. Then railway is also public corporation because it is doing some, providing some service. It is a department type of organization. So, how many type of public sector enterprises are there? Three. Which are they? Public corporation, government company and department. Okay. Then among these, the government companies, they are also called as what? They are also classified as? Navratnas, Maharatnas, Miniratnas, Miniratna 1, Miniratna 2. Oh, those classifications are for the purpose of reforms. So, we will all study all about the public sector reforms and this area will totally overlap with your economics.
because in economics also you have one then there will the unit in paper 2 which is related to planning okay plan and priorities like for example we had planning commission earlier you have heard of planning commission earlier it was now we have niti ayog why was there a shift from planning commission to niti ayog why we have changed it what was the system earlier what is the system now these areas again are overlapped with economics but here you have to focus more on organizational and administrative aspect right so niti ayog we will then study in more detail earlier i used to you know take more uh, discuss more detail about planning commission but nowadays i don't discuss that much detail i'll discuss planning commission briefly only because more questions are asked on niti ayog planning commission at the most they will ask you to tell the difference so anyhow we will discuss it but more focus will be on niti ayog then niti ayog what all is happening right and not only that how planning is happening at the center state and the local level what is called as a decentralized planning grassroots planning how people are getting involved what is the role of panchayats in planning what is the role of district administration is planning these things only will open up your mind altogether to understand how the entire system is working is that clear then you have now one more thing please understand that when we talk about organization okay let me elaborate a little bit on organization also then we will then we will get into a 10 minute this 10 minutes discussion on paper one also okay so you'll get an idea on this basis what all is there in paper one you see when you talk about organization what comes to your mind what are the components of organization disaster management okay audio and video are not working properly working properly okay yes when you talk about organization what are the components that comes to your mind okay leadership body body yes first of all the body has to come to your mind right and even before that the first thing you will set in the organization are the goals or objectives it has certain goals to be achieved then the people are coming together these people are to be arranged in some format what format is what you will then call as the structure of the organization a structure looks like this isn't it some hierarchy will be there some people working under certain other people can we call something like this as structure this we need to understand with respect to any of the organizations and let me tell you the moment you are clear about organization you know a lot many things will get clear in indian polity also i will just demonstrate just wait for a second structure is there okay every structure that means structure and its part all of these units which are there structure and its parts they have been allocated what will you allocate something to these structures we will allocate functions to them like we have many people working together first thing you will do is division of work right division of work is how you are creating the structure then everyone is given some task this is how this, the functions is allocated so structure function and then how they will work is the process remember these three terms now these are important component of organization every organization will have a structure then there will be functions allocated and some process how the organization will isn't it this is what we call as the physical component of the organization what component physical component physical component of the organization is what is physically placed now in this physical you will put people also appointment of people in these positions so there is a human part also of the organization or not there is a human component of the organization human component will involve the behavioral aspect how they will behave how they will act how will they perform like prime minister's position is there that is physical authority of prime minister but then how prime minister will behave the same position but different behavior will bring different dignity to the office of the prime minister have, have all different prime ministers behaved differently or not is there a difference in the behavior of mr modi and dr manmohan singh or not lot of will you be able to draw a table dr manmohan singh versus mr modi with a lot of points there i say that's pretty evident right everyone is doing that right good or bad either ways some good here some good there 
everything is not good in both the cases everything is not bad in both the cases right similarly you can compare nehru with the present prime minister or indira gandhi with someone else look at the traits look at their behavior there are some very interesting questions which have been asked here, here in this particular area are you getting it so there is a human now let's see one more thing and then i will give you i will explain everything with the example of parliament okay briefly in 2 minutes then we have in order to run the organization we required some means what are the means i mean the organization itself is a means but organization will also require resources right what are the resources resources can be human resources which we have already mentioned here human resources there what you will study in what is civil service civil service is all about these human resources recruitment of the human resource for the government you are you are studying for this exam this entire thing is part and parcel of this process no is recruiting you for the organization of government the human resource then there will be financial resource so financial resource you are going to study in financial management and administration civil services is also studied under personnel administration so there is a unit civil service in paper 2 there is a unit financial management in paper 2 why because it is telling you how the government is recruiting everyone how the government is getting its funds its finances how it is spending these are the units in paper 2 have you got something you will look at the syllabus once you go back try to if you are interested try to look further into the syllabus and see then also we also have in paper 2 how the indian system has evolved how the indian system has evolved means what was there earlier what was prescribed by kotelia what kind of mauryan administration was there and then how mughal administration got uh, it got in transfused into slowly and slowly through different periods it got changed what do we, what did we have during the mughal times and when the british took over in fact british were there's a very important event in, in the year 1765 what was that which is one, which is perhaps should be considered as one of the landmark events in the administrative history of india 1765 diwani rights were given right diwani rights were given by the british to the sorry by the mughal to the british for collection of land revenue in bengal right and this is how they started to control administration so the mughal administration how it transform how it gets you know change into british administration then the entire era of british times you will have to study how it evolved this is a very interesting story not only the constitutional development but also the administration in fact i will take one and a half session on this to explain you how from 1600 onwards you know how things have happened how the entire administration has got established how the office of district collector will be born so this entire thing is also given there in your paper one so it's about evolution this entire system all different types of organization which i have told you financial affairs civil services affair then district administration is another unit which where you will learn everything about district administration there's another unit called as law and order administration so everything about police force everything about armed forces central armed forces and the issues related and more importantly the police reforms all these things are very relevant for your gs and your polity also okay now let me give you one example for this like parliament if you have to study parliament don't you focus on these aspect of parliament thus parliament first of all you will try to see what is its goals and objectives of the parliament what it does essentially overall right is legislation isn't it have you people studied some polity yet have you some of you may have some of you may not have parliament does it have a structure or not will you study the structure first or not what is the structure of parliament president and the two houses within the two houses also there is a structure there is a leader of the opposition there is a leader of the house there is a treasury bench where the government ministers will sit and the opposition parties will sit this side the ruling party will sit this side right in both the houses lok sabha and rajya sabha there is a structure every position has been given function also and then there are parliamentary rules and procedures which are defining the process and then you study how the parliamentarians behave in the parliament behavioral aspect how are they speaking 
how they are creating that ruckus in the parliament many a time. Sometimes it becomes destructive also, violent also, many a time. And sometimes the house runs in the most decent, dignified manner as well. Sometimes you will see that they are very cordial and they are, you know, the ruling party and the opposition party, they are coming together and sometimes they are just, you know, having a burst of contention between them. So it's all about the behavioral aspect. So that's about paper too. Is this clear? So there's one unit, civil service, financial management, I told you. And one more is there, which is about reforms in administration. How slowly, after independence, the reforms have happened in India. For which we have been establishing Administrative Reforms Commission. Have you heard of ARC? There are ARC reports for your ethics paper also you'll have to study. Okay. So I will tell you that anyhow. That's paper two. And in paper one now. What is there in paper one? Okay, now you see, I will tell you with the help of this diagram itself. See, <clears throat> first of all, you need to know everything about the organization, right? So, what is related to organization are certain units. There is one unit called as organization itself, okay? In your paper one, there is one unit called as organization. That is telling you about the types of organization, certain basic theories on organization, then there are more elaborate theories on organization which is given in administrative thought. Administrative thought is also related to organizational theories. Example, which thinkers are you going to study? Any idea? Weber you will study, Max Weber, you will study Henry Fiol, you will study Taylor, some of the names I have already taken, you will study wonderful ideas of Mary Parker Follett, and then many other participative management thinkers, Elton Mayo, yes, human relations movement, the great enlightenment. So these are the theories which are also studied in the world of management. Anyone here, MBA student? Anyone has done MBA? Now if you have done MBA or you look at MBA course, these organizational thinkers are also studied in MBA. Why? Because MBA is also about management, organization. The only difference is private administration, this is public administration. So, we are bringing those ideas here also. Clear? Then, so organization and administrative thought. Then there is a unit which tells us the relationship, this relationship, relationship of the government with politics. Okay? This relationship, that means about government or state or politics. Or for that matter, the very basic questions, what government should do, what government should not do, how government should do it, right? What shall be the larger relationship of the government with the, with the political and social system? There are a number of paradigms. You must have heard about minimum government and maximum governance, have you? Minimum government, maximum governance, what is that? When this government came to power in 2014, Prime Minister Modi had given this slogan, minimum government, maximum government. This is one of the paradigms in administration. Should government do less, should government do more? Why is it that, why is it that the government machinery most of the time becomes inefficient? It is that someone had said that if you give control over Sahara desert to a government, there will be shortage of sand in the world. Why is it that government system is always that inefficient? This has been, you know, this has been very well studied by economists. They say that they have come up with an economic theory of bureaucracy. Economic theory of bureaucracy tells us that why is it that bureaucracy is not economic? They will become spendthrift. If you are part of the system, if you become a bureaucrat, you will certainly, you will realize that everything is not that efficient. Why is it so? So, there is one entire realm of thought which has been brought from economics called as public choice approach. Then we say government is not like, you know, there were times when uh, all over the world government was being criticized. From late 1970s, okay, late Though I will tell all this in detail with you with a good amount of framework later on. So, you will understand how the world had been unfolding, what changes have been happening in the world, how bureaucracy was changing, how
how the role of the government is changed so towards the end of late 1970s what happened was in the entire world you know uh, all the countries they slowly and slowly they started to criticize bureaucracy because it was it became evident that bureaucracy is very inefficient margaret thatcher you know margaret thatcher have you heard british prime minister she became prime minister in, in 1979 in in britain and when she comes to power they she started a privatization drive there this is the bureaucracy or the government machinery is not efficient we will privatize same thing happened when ronald reagan became president of us then started this entire process what is part and parcel of lpg liberalization privatization and globalization so you need to understand the role of the state role of the government and role of administration which had been changing over the period of time with respect to politics with respect to society also this is going to be studied that means the role of government state and politics and administration their relationship how everything is changing this is studied in the very first unit in your syllabus called as introduction in paper 1 don't consider don't take introduction lightly it is the most important unit of the entire syllabus most important ideas are there in introduction and it is the most uh, interesting unit also which covers all the paradigms earlier the paradigm would be such that the government will do a lot of work then slowly and slowly they will shift no we will privatize then what shall be the mode of privatization should there be outsourcing then what we call as business process reengineering then comes in the concept of new public management and we already had public choice approach criticizing bureaucracy so these many ideas then of course the idea of governance and good governance given by world bank in its report in 1989 where the world bank says that whatever funds we are giving to the developing societies they are wasting that fund why should we give the funds to the government then the world bank said that for any kind of aid we will give to these countries we will ask them to reform their system bring the idea of good governance thus came in the concept of good governance this governance and good governance you know that governance unit is in your gs also you have to study a lot of it just because you are studying all these paradigms here you will be crystal clear about governance also are we clear then related to behavior like behavioral aspect in the organization there are theories on this also what is covered un under administrative behavior like leadership styles theories on leadership what is the best a uh, best uh, way to lead you know can we produce leaders can we train leaders if we can train leaders how we can train the leaders leadership motivation morale decision making communication communication is such an important function the only function of the prime minister mentioned in the constitution under article 78 is communication and then there are theories on communication and how communication happens in the entire system you know all these ideas all the thinkers they will make one particular concept as their central concept you will find in the work that gulik and oruvek will focus only on structure only on structure henry fiol will focus on functions taylor will focus on work okay weber focuses on everything almost that is how give the theory of bureaucracy mary parker follett she will focus on situations in the organization imagine that situation every thinker has that one particular core element where they are focusing the moment you are clear about that core element the entire thought gets clear so there are theories on communication leadership decision making motivation morale under administrative behavior then also you need to understand that this relationship of society and administration society and administration the entire world can be divided into two types of societies what are they the entire world we can divide into two types so they have been divided into two types of societies primarily developed societies and developing society what is the difference in developing and developed society no it's not that simple it's a very complicated you know theories on this so there is a very the most interesting you know ideas 
that have been given by Fred W. Riggs in comparative public administration where we are going to study. So, this is related to CPA and development dynamics. You are going to study everything about the societies also. Because without understanding society, administration cannot be understood. So, a little bit of understanding of society is also required. Indian society, what is its nature? How is it different from the developed society? Right? What pattern of society is there? Accordingly, you will design the administration. So, Fred W. Riggs has given a model there. It's a, he, he has drawn an analogy that uh, when a ray of light is passing through a prism, how it behaves. So, a ray of light passing through the prism and then coming out. So, they scattered, right? Then he says, this side is underdeveloped, this is developed and this is developing society. And through this, he explains the features of the developing and developed society. Which, when I will discuss this and you will understand that in this particular, you know, idea or this chapter, it will help you a lot in your understanding of society. Even in your, you know, areas of Indian society and social justice in GS, it will help you a lot there. Then development dynamic, very important, very important unit. Development dynamic like the year since development has started to happen. From which year? President Truman of United States of America in the year 1949, he had given a statement that the world is divided into developed and underdeveloped countries. Why? Why is he telling this? Because something was happening in the world because 1949, okay, year 1949, what had happened was communism had started to spread. Now, you know communism. Most of you do not know what is communism, socialism, capitalism, liberalism. To In order to make it better for you, in all the fundamental basic classes, I will discuss all these basic concepts. With you. Okay, The entire mode of production, how society has evolved, how political ideologies have evolved, what are the political ideologies. Because a student of public administration, these things are not given directly in your syllabus, but you need still to understand them. So, I will discuss all of this right in the beginning in those seven sessions and then we will start the syllabus. Is that clear? So, communism had started to spread in 1949 because China also had become communist in 1949. When the USA saw that communism is expanding, then all these countries, the developing countries will also become communist. No, that's why Truman says that developed and developing, so developed and underdeveloped societies and then he says, we are developed and we are there to help you. We are here to give you aid for development. We are there to support you in the process of development. This is how development becomes a major political force. Oh, that we will discuss in when we will discuss the topic, no? Yeah, I mean, this is, I am giving you a brief about all the chapters which are going to come. There are, there are going to be like four sessions on development dynamics altogether. Okay. So, development has changed over the period of time. Different people have defined development. Some people say it's about increasing levels of choices. Some people like Amartya Sen says it is freedom. Development is freedom. For some, it is a raising of living standards of people. Number of ways it can be defined. And the idea also has changed like 1950s, 60s, 70s, 80s. And you will it, it will get reflected also in the policies in India also. Like whatever were the strategy of Nehru and whatever were the strategy of Indira Gandhi will be very different. And you will be more clear about it when you understand the changing strategies and approaches of development in the world. Why in 1971 elections Indira Gandhi made Garibi Hatao as a slogan for elections? It is not what was happening just in India. It was something which was happening the world over. Because that was a time where poverty was being spoken everywhere as one of the important approaches of development. Poverty alleviation. 1972 to Stockholm conference, Indira Gandhi goes to Stockholm, right, the environment conference and she says what statement she has given that uh, poverty is the worst polluter, right. She says poverty is the worst polluter, development is the best contraceptive. This is how the profiles of development administration will change. Then in order to implement development, we require a special administration. That is a big question. 
the same machinery which was implementing law and order administration during the British times, is it fit enough to bring development also in India? You understand how colonial administration was like? How was it? What was the nature of colonial administration? It was forceful, it was exploitative, it was coercive, right? But we want more people friendly administration. We want more open administration for development purpose. So it needs to transform. Is that clear? So that's there in CP and development dynamics. And then there are two units, one related to both of these in theory, like personal administration. What is the theory behind civil services? What is the theory behind financial management is given in financial administration. Then there is the most important unit, another very important unit. This also I will put along with introduction here. Okay. Introduction related to government politics administration also is what is public policy. Very interesting, very powerful unit, public policy, which will tell you all about the different models of public policy making. Like we have making a lot of policies in India and you can relate with, okay, what model was followed in this? How the decision making has been done in these public policy models? In fact, policy studies are in itself, in itself is a development and policy studies in themselves are a discipline. But of course, you have to study only very few models over here in brief, but very interesting, very important. I think I have given you a glimpse of the syllabus now. You people can go through the syllabus by yourself. And uh, then of course, if you people are following up, then in all those basic fundamental classes, you see that how you will get empowered with respect to learning this subject. And once you will start covering the syllabus, of course, you will get an idea. Okay. Now, one more thing I wanted to discuss. In fact, few small things which I just wanted to discuss. I will take another 15 minutes of yours. Okay. First of all, having discussed, you got an idea right now about what is there in this subject. Fairly good amount of idea. It's all about this system that is there in India and then what theories and you know ideas are there to improve upon all of these. Public administration, uh, let me just fill up that, you know, continuum, which I was trying to draw in the beginning. Uh, this side we had kept what? Philosophy. Okay. And this side we had kept mathematics. Right. So, if I have to, what is the role of administration in politics? Okay. Uh, maybe I, I can answer this a little later on, but I think you must have got an idea. What is the role of administration in politics? Politics is about the policies you are making. No, So, implementing those policies is one. Then getting the feedback also for improving the policies. That is there. So, but politics control administration more. Administration controls politics less. It is the politics which is controlling it. But of course, this is a very big question and it will require a lot of discussion throughout these sessions. We are going to talk mostly about politics and administration. So, philosophy and mathematics. So, next to philosophy, I can place, you see, in order uh, some of the disciplines like sociology. Then I will put political science. Then I will put public administration. In fact, between public administration and political science, I can also put law. Then this side, I will put management. Okay, then I will put psychology, then I will put near to psychology, but this side I can put anthropology. Somewhere here itself we can put geography also. Are you getting the point? As you are moving in that direction, these subjects are become more and more objective. So, public administration in the realm of social sciences is more, this I will call is more balanced realm this realm, where things are subjective, objectives, a fair amount of balance between them. Political science, sociology and philosophy, these disciplines are a little more philosophical. And it's not that philosophy is not there in public administration, but in comparison to these subjects, I mean, a little less abstractness would be there. But both of them are wonderful in their own different ways. It's about your capacity. It's about your interest, how you will choose the subject. When a subject becomes more abstract, then it becomes more analytical. Also. Okay. 
this side will be more analytical, more abstract, more subjective, more value oriented. Okay. So, I can write this, this extreme will be related to what? This will be abstract, subjective. See, terms are very important. You should keep noting down. Do not take this as a workshop only. This is something very important. You will not even realize that later on it will help you to understand many other things. Value, value orientation more value orientation, subjective, abstract, more analytical, and if it is more analytical, of course, more thought you will have to apply to analyze and also a uh, little more, uh, you know, writing skills will be required, expressions, because it will be a little more abstract, so a little more complicated as you move this way. But this should not be the basis of deciding. I mean, this could be one of the factors only. Okay, there are many factors which you have to take into consideration to decide your option. What factors will be there? There are certain factors which are internal to you. There are certain factors external to you. Factors of, I will just mention the factors. Okay, what factors will be there? You tell me which is the most important factor on the basis of which you should decide your option. First of all, is help in GS. I am not writing in order, okay. You will tell me the order. I am just writing it random manner. Second, maybe interest. Third, maybe performance. How it is performing in UPSC, mains result. Then another factor would be your capacity to absorb, which but is related to interest also. Then availability availability of resources or sources, maybe classes, maybe guidance, maybe books, maybe material, right? These are the factors which you will take into account to decide your optional, which is the most important factor. Interest is the most important factor. You, I will tell you about performance. You see, all these subjects, there are some subjects which are relatively, which are performing <coughs> more or less with a little variations every year, okay. When you talk about all the social sciences subjects, okay, like anthropology, political science, sociology, public administration, uh, or you talk about um, psychology also, okay, even philosophy, most of these subjects like 8 to 10 percent of the people every year. The variation is between this range only. 8 to 10 percent of the people who are writing mains are clearing finally the exam from all these subjects. But for history and geography and economics, the percentage is a slightly lower. But this also should not be a factor I am telling. And why is it that all these subjects have been able to maintain between 8 to 10 percent is because these subjects are more relevant for your GS preparation. When you study any of these subjects, you prepare good amount of your GS. In fact, political science helps maximum in GS paper. Political science and IR helps maximum in GS followed by public administration, which I will just tell you how it overlaps with GS. These two subjects will help you the most in GS paper because they will help in prelims also, they will help in mains also and in many papers of mains. But then this again should not be the factor to decide the you can take it into consideration. I always will give prime importance to interest. If you are interested, you will do put up everything what you can. And on the basis of performance, just because this year topper is from this subject or more people among the top 10 ranker are from this subject, you should never decide optional because the next year is going to be different. Every year it changes. It is not the toppers who are setting the trend, sorry, it is not the trends who makes a topper, is that it is it is the other, the other way now. right. So, you have to decide based upon your abilities, your capacities, your interests, then of course, look also practically how it is helping in GS and it is performing fairly well in UPSC. I have seen like there are people who are still taking engineering subjects and some of them are actually those who have the real passion commitment are clearing with even electrical engineering. Though it, it, it is seen as, you know, they have become quite difficult these days. Even in economics, this year itself, you see people, there are in, among the toppers in economics this year. 
the economics wasn't considered as reliable but if someone really is interested and wants to study or have studied go ahead please so i think the first factor is this interest second is how it can help you in gs third factor you can take into consideration performance that will be the and of course availability of resources and sources everything is available i mean it's uh, after all same set of sources resources is there for everyone right so why are you worried if some subject doesn't have much resource is going to be the same reality for everyone <coughs> clear on that basis you can take the decision and last thing uh, is no two things i have to discuss first is gs paper how it helps prelims i have already told you right how it will help how public administration helps in your prelims paper okay let me mention this if you talk about prelims then in your governance related issues more than that all polity related issues polity and governance and also in certain policy policy related issues sometimes even law related issues one or two questions on law is also being asked like on magistrate and all this year also the questions have been asked more than that let me tell you current affairs whenever you are studying current affairs you know in the current affair the component will be mostly some or the other organization or institution isn't it every time you have to study some organize and just because you are clear about the concept of organizations institutions what they do what they can do where are they required in public administration your understanding of current affairs is much better you can even predict okay it's a regulatory authority so it already i know its functions are these so in current affairs if there is something related to regulatory authority you will easily understand it faster even in economics for that matter because there is a good amount of overlap, overlap with economics like even your monetary policy rb monetary policy is there in your syllabus of pubad also fiscal policy budget everything is there in your syllabus of pubad so current affairs the entire system when you understand how it is working a understanding of all the issues becomes far more easier this is something this is an extra help which public administration only can provide i can tell you because it exposes you with the entire system this kind of understanding about the system which comes to you will not be provided by any other subject not even political science will be able to provide that much of understanding as pubad provides okay and for gs mains if you talk about in mains i will say in paper 1 there are some issues related to society which is related to development and welfare you will have a better understanding on that of course because you have understood society also better like rigsian model and all that those things so it helps there paper 2 of gs entirely except for bilateral aspects right so i will say 75% or maybe 80% of paper 2 which includes what all polity governance social justice all these areas it will help you even the role of non government organizations in fact development process in industry is there one unit in in social justice and you are studying all about development here in development dynamics then about the role of ngos media pressure groups you are going to study here in in your accountability and control there's one unit which i did not mention in paper 1 accountability and control how the government is held accountable then rti all the governance issues citizens charter rti social audit all those things are there in your syllabus of public then paper 3 paper 3 i would say that it will i can't write straight away right in terms of percentage but i can tell you there are areas of economics what areas is there in your syllabus planning right plan and priorities where you study niti ayog and the previous regime was there public sector enterprises public sector then public revenue public revenue is about the taxes how it is collected center state how the taxes are collected who takes what gst and everything or everything is to be studied in your pubad also this is this will be helpful in your polity as well public revenue then rural development even public revenue please add budgeting also budget we any how are going to discuss in detail the types of budget the theory behind budget zero based budget outcome budget 
programming budget or these different types of budget you will have to study here then on that basis you can discuss and analyze the budgeting process in india also better in your gs what reforms are required what changes are required in the budgeting process okay so these are and then of course uh, you can even mention monetary policy monetary policy generally but i don't focus as much in the pubat classes because anyhow you are studying it in more technical terms in your gs but still it is there in your syllabus you see the amount of overlap and more than that in paper 4 even more overlap than paper 3 ethics aptitude integrity what are you learning here like public service values accountability governance even for that matter some of the you know those uh, topics in your behavior like motivation and leadership they will also be related to values and ethics so lot of overlap in paper four also right this is how there's a overlap you see it for yourself but okay look go through the syllabus of pubat go through the syllabus of gs paper see the overlap look into the topics do some kind of you know detailed study over there because all the syllabus you know for gs and optional should be mapped in your mind all the time because when you are reading the newspaper you should know okay this is important that's not important are you getting my point then finally i'll just tell you in brief another 5 minutes about the course uh, the course overall about this course is that first of all we will give you a planner of all the topics right in the beginning we will try to stick to that planner only as much as possible sometimes only there may be spill over i may take extra session okay or we might at the like say for that matter uh, once the course has progressed 50% we might adjust the planner once we'll give you a fresh plan overall there will be around 90 to 95 sessions so i mentioned this but it always exceeds 95 from my side but then i will try to keep up somewhere between 90 and 95 sessions i will be taking most of the sessions but not all the sessions i will be taking around 70 of these sessions okay around 70 18 and then 7 sessions this uh, will be taken by me okay this will be taken up by mr g uh, arya who is going to take some of the areas uh, related to personal affairs and legal affairs because he specializes in law so he will be taking some of the law related law and order administrative law and all that seven session will be related with something related with political executive and uh, local government also okay this will be taken up by dr smita she specializes in indian government and politics so she will be taking some seven sessions with you okay but all the theoretical areas in fact most of the areas i will be taking those 70 sessions with you is that clear oh the uh, and in fact the moment we will cross like once we will cross 60% of the syllabus you will feel quite empowered in the sense like you say oh now i can do it that's the way it should happen also right and then by the time coming to close then she'll say that okay enough now you can do by myself and that's it you will be getting the booklets for all the units okay some booklets will be only unit specific some will be combined also because some units are very important so more detailed you know structure we have given some brief notes also there right if you want to revise quickly though revision should happen only from the class notes i told you your class notes will be complete in that form in the format it will be very well structured okay because i am studying organization because we are learning organization i think we should be setting the best standards of organizing ourselves first and foremost right we should get reflected in your notes only then along with the notes along with those booklet itself will club some articles which you have to read extra 
uh, we have also some groups whatsapp group and telegram group also where we will connect all of you and i keep circulating some material extra material uh, maybe some articles some new articles some iipa journals also there so recent iipa journal because the ones which we have been given had become quite old so we'll give you fresh iipa journals now okay which you will refer afterwards not required i will tell you everything what all is to be required what is to be studied then we will have some uh, regular assignment because i will focus a lot on question answer structure in the class in fact i spend a lot of time in discussing all the previous years questions what their structure should be i'll give you a lot of assignments you have to structure them then i'll give you to write them you will submit your answers they will be evaluated and you will get back those assignments right so regular assignments will be there and then there will be four to five tests also once we have covered substantial number of units we will have tests also but assignments themselves will be tests you will give you given marks maybe initially one or two assignments will not give you marks but after that we will give you marks also. then i will discuss in between the sessions everything about answer writing approach of answer writing in along with the class itself i'll keep discussing about how to write answer so there will be a good amount of detailed discussion on that is going to be the agenda now it's your floor if you want to ask anything book list book list um, i think we anyhow circulate the book list as we start with the class if you are joining you will get the book list or otherwise maybe we can circulate it through some mechanism uh, the book list will be available you can always take it because i don't want to write the name of the books here uh, but i can tell you that like you asked right in the beginning basic books to start right so in public administration though there is no basic book as such but i would suggest that when we are starting learning you should be at least you have studied your polity ncrt okay along with polity ncrt you can take either of these two books public administration uh, by padia and padia padia and padia or sharma and sadana you can take both also if you want to had i been in your place i would have actually gone for both the books or as many books possible for reference books are not to be studied books are to be meant for the purpose of referring only okay like for example i have discussed something in the class you have studied your booklet also after that if you want to read something more read it it is not required in all the chapters because your booklet is good enough even if you will cover booklet and class notes and keep following the newspaper and current events it will suffice but still i prefer when students are reading more books because reading will help you to improve your language improve your expression improve your analytical abilities and a mindful reading i will also demonstrate all these things how you need to read how you need to comprehend how you need to make notes i will demonstrate in the class even newspaper also what is important from public administration's point of view so you can take either of these two books and read introductory chapters only introductory chapters okay let's say 8 to 10 chapters or you can always ask me i can give my number also to you you can always ask me anything you can even or over the whatsapp mostly you should ask over the whatsapp if you want to ask me which chapters you should i should read please send me the index of that particular book either of them i can tell you the chapters anyhow i will tell you when we'll start with the class i will tell you if you are joining the class no need to study anything for now okay let me let me you know guide you properly if you are joining the class if you are not joining the class go ahead start with those introductory chapters then there are more books these are the books which you are starting with paper 1 but then the most important book for paper 1 is new horizon is new horizon of public administration by mohit bhattacharya mohit bhattacharya must book and administrative thinkers by prasad and prasad these four three or four books either of these two you can take and these two are must anyhow you have to take lot of people talk about aribam's book but that's a compilation i say that you can buy aribam's book but you can keep it as a last resort in terms of like those areas which you have not been able to cover from anywhere nicely you can study from there at the most but don't worry about it you can focus here if you are if you are joining the class don't bother about books for now i will give you proper guidance how what where to study from 
okay it is meant and for paper 2 you can have book on indian administration there are three books by three different authors one is arora and goel another one is avasti and avasti avasti and avasti and third one is i will repeat the names if i have not written them properly here avasti and avasti third one is hoshiar singh Sharma and Sadana, okay, S A D A N A. Sharma and Sadana. Title is public administration. I'll repeat quickly the names: Fadia and Fadia, or Sharma and Sadana. Title will be public administration. There will be a subtitle also: theory and concept. Main heading is public administration. Remember that there is a book by Fadia and Fadia also on Indian administration. Don't confuse with that, okay? The title is public administration. New horizon of public administration by Mohit Bhattacharya. M Bhattacharya, administrative thinkers by Prasad and Prasad, Prasad and Prasad. Then administ Indian administration, Arora and Goel, Avasti and Avasti and Hoshiar Singh. So I think I have told you about uh, the books on public administration briefly over here only, only briefly, okay? There are some specialized area. If you are studying by yourself, then it may be required. If you are part and parcel of the class, then of course you will have your notes, your booklet, and I'll refer whatever extra reading is required. Clear? That is all from my side. Now you can ask me any question if you have. Yes? I can't hear you. How public administration will help you? In essay writing, okay, see, the nature of public administration is that, what is the nature of this discipline? This discipline is quite a balanced discipline, okay? Balanced in terms of, I would say, values and facts, right? Objectivity and subjectivity. But at the same time, there is a fair amount of thought also involved here, right? Thought will open up your mind, your ability to, ability to think, Right? Think, philosophize. There are a lot of philosophical topics also asked these days. Right? So, just because the thinkers are there and the way we are going to learn our approach will be to make you more like a thinker as a, as a thinking being, that is going to help you a lot to, you know, expand the realm of your thoughts. I say, then public administration is a very multidisciplinary. Ha haven't you seen that? Society is involved. Politics is involved, law is involved, psychology, behavior is involved. It's perhaps the most multidisciplinary subject, I can tell you. Most multidisciplinary, public policy, again, lot of overlap with economics. That multidisciplinary nature, it helps in generating perspectives. Generating perspectives. Generating dimensions. You can think in different dimensions, you can brainstorm better. If other people will think about only two dimensions, you will think about ten dimensions. Your mind will work in all different directions. So, obviously, your content will get enriched when you are writing it. Right? And then it is also analytical. So, your ability to analyze, it will help you a lot. Then, more importantly, the way the question is asked in this paper and the way you will learn, the skills you will acquire to write those answers in limited words, it will help you to discipline yourself in your write-up in essay. So, multifarious ways the subject is going to help you in your essay writing. And don't uh, forget that you have started to prepare for your interviews from your day one. Because interview is all about your personality, right? And personality you cannot change in one day or just by doing certain sessions. You need to inculcate those values, those attitude, that behavior in you, right, from now itself. And how will it happen better? Because you will know everything what is expected out of administrator, what is expected out of bureaucrat. In the interview, they give you some questions uh, related to your practical situations. Like they will give you a situation like if you are a DM or a SP of some, you know, city or some district, then in, under this situation, what will you do? 
then you are better because you understand administration then you will be able to better analyze and give better answers so this is way and because it is also multidisciplinary you can bring many dimensions when you are answering the questions in the interview also so it i think this subject again it helps a lot in the interview preparation but of course it's a far cry right now for you first of all you'll have to clear mains for that got the answer and of course you know public administration is what you are going to do afterwards as an administrator so of course it is the most relevant subject to be studied if you want to be an administrator without any doubt any other question done fine okay so this is all uh Sharma and Sadama, uh, uh, Sharma and just a second. And Aribam's book, I just mentioned that you can use Aribam's book for the purpose of filling the gaps afterwards. Okay, I will rather tell you that we should be first focus on conventional literature as much as we can. You are confused between sociology and Pabad. Now you can just go through these two sessions like you have already had. I think sociology workshop before. You can go through it. Go through the syllabus. More important and try to see where your interest lies. Okay. If you have already studied polity and all, if you have taken interest, then you can take Pabad also. Uh, if you are more interested in learning more about society, you can go just look at the syllabus, analyze them better, and decide for yourself. Every subject is interesting. Every subject is interesting. It's about what you want to take, where your interest area lies. Okay. And also, like if you, some of you are confused with political science and PubMed also, uh, I teach both the subjects. I teach political science also. I teach public administration also. So I will be taking a workshop in political science also on 26th. In case if some of you or any of your friends are interested or are confused with the optional, how to decide, then you can join again. On 26th, we will have the session at 2 p.m. on political science. Okay. So, see you sometime then. If you have any other question or queries, you can always ask me over the WhatsApp. Okay. You can call me also, but first WhatsApp would be better. Like sometime I may not be free or maybe in class or something. Thank you so much. Thank you.